Hi Fran, this is Neil Cullen from Energise Technology. Thanks very much for getting in touch with us. You work for a charity that uses Office 365 and your question was around with so many applications that are available as part of this platform, how and when should you use each of them? So what we're going to do is take a look at four applications, Outlook, OneDrive, SharePoint and Teams, and we're going to look at the kind of use cases for deciding which one to use. So once you've got the hang of those four applications, there's another couple that I think you might find really useful. So at the end of this video, we're going to take a look at those two. Before we delve into the functionality of each individual application, let's take a high level overview across all of them. So SharePoint is an office collaboration tool. It allows you to store, organize, share and access information. So it's perfect for working as a team or within an organization. Teams is Microsoft's video conferencing and chat based communication tool. That's going to allow you to have virtual meetings, but it's also going to allow you to chat in real time with your colleagues. OneDrive is an internet based file storage system. So what this allows you to do is upload documents, keep them safe and secure and make sure that they're backed up. Finally, Outlook. I'm sure we've all used Outlook in the past, but it's an email application which also has various functionality like a calendar and it allows you to schedule meetings, create tasks, all those kind of things as well. SharePoint is the perfect tool to use when you need to collaborate and share documents as a group. You can create any number of sites for each team, working group or document group that you need to share within your organisation. This could be a site for your trustees meetings, where you can store the agenda, minutes, actions and papers for all of those meetings or it could be a central area to store all of your policies, such as your HR, finance, or IT. SharePoint moves you away from having to store documents on a local network drive, on your local computer, or even start emailing them around in order to share them. And because it's a central system, you get control over exactly who's got access to all of those documents. It's also designed to be really extensible, so it has the capability to add plugins to further enhance the functionality. So if there's something that you feel that you're missing from the base functionality, you can add that in. So that might be common tools such as project management functionality or even integration with other systems. If you want a virtual meeting, a quick video call or an instant message conversation, Microsoft Teams is the application to use. You can schedule meetings with an Outlook if it's a structured meeting with attendees and that will give you a link to that particular meeting. But you also have the flexibility to create ad hoc meetings or video calls. A really good piece of functionality is the screen sharing so that you can all have a look at the same thing on the screen at the same time. Teams has also started to include some accessibility features such as the option for automatic captions during the meeting. The final piece of functionality is the instant chat. This is a great way of communicating with individuals or with groups of people based around their interests, functions or projects. OneDrive can be viewed as an extension of your local file system. It's cloud-based so all your files are securely backed up and resilient. You can either copy files directly to OneDrive through the website or set up synchronization between your computer so that any files that you modify are automatically backed up and synchronized. Whilst you can use OneDrive to share documents with other users, it can be really difficult to track permissions and revoke them if people no longer need access. So it's best used for one-off file sharing. If you need to share multiple documents or keep track of user access, SharePoint may be a better option. If your organisation is using Office 365, most people will already be using Outlook for their emails. Outlook also has calendar functionality, so you can manage your diary or schedule meetings, and it can help you create and manage your to-do list as well. Email is great for more formal communications within your organisation, or for outbound communication where you don't know what platforms your recipients are going to be using. It's a great way of providing an audit trail for communications if you're dealing with external suppliers. To summarise all of that, if you're working with documents and files, there are two options to think about. You should use SharePoint if the documents you're working on form part of a central set, such as HR or IT policies. You should also use SharePoint if you want to collaborate or share those documents with a team or project group within your organisation. It makes it really easy to control access to those documents as well. Looking at OneDrive, because it's much more of a personal file storage system, you should use this if the document you're working on doesn't need to be shared and it's just a personal working document. You'd also want to use OneDrive to make sure the files you're working on are stored safely instead of on your local computer where you could lose them if there was a hardware failure. 
When thinking about communicating with others, Microsoft Teams should be used when you want a virtual meeting, a one-to-one call with someone inside your organisation, or you want to instant message a colleague or a group. Email should be used for all other communications, which are a bit more formal, or for external suppliers where you don't know exactly what software they're going to be using. Looking at a couple of other applications which I think you might find useful, the first is Sway. This application allows you to easily create dynamic documents and presentations. It's perfect if you want to create an internal newsletter or other internal updates. You can embed lots of different types of content in Sway, ranging from text to images to videos. The second application is Microsoft Stream. The best way I can describe this is as your organization's personal YouTube. It allows you to upload videos, create channels and groups based on different topics or teams. Users can create their own content to upload, so it could be great for how-to videos or training while people can't do face-to-face activities. So thanks so much for listening. I hope you found this useful and that it's answered your question. We're going to try and do loads of these, so as many people as we can get with their problems, we're going to do a similar kind of video and, and publish them as wide as we can so that we can try and make life as easy as we can for people at the moment. If you thought this was useful and you like the content, please head to our website. We'll be updating that, but also follow us on our social media channels as well. Thank you. Bye-bye.